last uh, so last few weeks we have been studying about uh, you see the holy spirit uh, we have seen clearly from the scriptures that the uh, holy spirit uh, actually is uh, the power of god the invisible power that works uh, in uh, you see various ways it actually is helping uh, the new creature to make the calling election sure it was the same holy power that jesus was uh, filled with uh, you see and he did miracles uh, a lot of uh, wonders all the places so today we are going to see about uh, the son of god what does the bible say about son of god you see so let us read on verse in deuteronomy 6:4 Okay, anybody who is willing to read, you can read. Uh, Peter brother, Ashish brother, whoever is comfortable, you can read. Deuteronomy 6.4 brother. Hear, O Israel, the Lord of God is one Lord. Very good. So, Okay, Peter, but not an issue. The Ashish will read the verses for you. Just listen. Okay. So in Deuteronomy 6.4, it says, Hear, O Lord, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So it says, our God is one. It is the same thing that is given to us in, you say, Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. There it clearly says that those shall have no other gods uh, besides uh, me. So, there is only one uh, true God. And Jesus himself, uh, you see, quotes the same thing uh, in uh, Matthew, sorry, Mark 12.29. Uh, brother, can you read Mark 12.29, brother? <clears throat> and Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Very good. The Lord our God is one Lord. So here, yeah, Jesus uh, clearly says, uh, you see, that the first of all the covenant is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So here, yeah, Jesus clearly says that our God, the God of Israel, is only one. So if... Uh, he is one. Who is that one? Jesus uh, had a wonderful opportunity here to clearly tell to the people of Israel that uh, that uh, one God was he himself. Uh. But uh, Jesus never uh, told like that uh, in the scriptures. But he clearly said to all the Israel, including himself, that here, that the God of Israel is only one God. Uh. You see, and uh, it is not uh, he himself. Uh. You see, once what happened, uh, all the disciples along with Jesus were just uh, going to some place. When uh, on the way, Jesus uh, you see, pulled out a, a you see, conversation and he asked the disciples, what do the people say about the Son of Man? Who is he? And uh, you see, Many of the disciples said that, oh, you. some people say that you are John the Baptist, you are Jeremiah, you are Eliah, Eliah the prophet, all these things and all. You see, but that is the moment Jesus asked them a question. Okay, let everybody, you see, believe or tell, uh, you see, various things. But what about your opinion? What do you say? You see, Jesus asked them. And that is the time that Peter gave a clear, you see, definition saying, you see, thou art, uh, huh? you see, the son of the living God. You see, uh, let us read that verse in Matthew 16 chapter, uh, verses 13, uh, you see, to uh, 15, brother. Uh, read, brother. Matthew 16 chapter, 13 to 15. <clears throat> okay, brother. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do you mean? Whom do men say that the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say 
that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Okay. Simon Peter so, said, yeah, Jesus puts a question. Whom do you say that I am? Then Peter, what does Peter reply? Continue with that. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Ah, immediately Peter responds, you see, Thou art Christ. You see, you are Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. But here, when uh, as soon as uh, Peter mentions that Jesus is the Son of the living God, you see, Jesus never rebuked uh, Peter. Jesus never scolded Peter also. You see, but he appreciates uh, telling that uh, blessed uh, are you Simon Borjona because you have not spoken this one. You see, the Father in heaven has spoken through you. You see, read with that, continue with that. Huh? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are those Simon Borjona for place and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Very good. You see, the Father which is in heaven has revealed this unto you. So, if uh, what Peter said was wrong, that uh, if Jesus is Son of God, if that was wrong, clearly Jesus wouldn't have hesitated to rebuke Peter at this moment because just a few moments later, you see, Peter gives a wrong suggestion. Immediately, Jesus never waited, but immediately he boldly told Peter that the get behind me, Satan. Read with the verse 23, brother. same chapter, verse 23. Mm. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For those savorous not the things that are be of God, but those that be of men. You see, get behind me, Satan. You see, here, Peter, you see, told a small mistake, a wrong thing, you see. But that only Jesus did not keep quiet. He immediately scolded Peter. You see, if he has uh, corrected uh, the mistake of Peter here, you see, then why did he not correct the mistake of uh, Peter, what he said in Matthew 16, 16? Jesus never corrected that. Uh, Rather, instead of correcting, he appreciated saying, Blessed are you, Simon, because what you are told is absolutely right. That means what? You see, that means Jesus is who? If you see, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is not the God, but Jesus is the Son of God. You see, and Jesus appreciates that one and tells, Blessed are you, Simon Borjana, because God has revealed this one to you. That means the real fact and the correct statement is that Jesus is the Son of God. Many of the Christians today commit a mistake saying and thinking that God himself died on the cross. You see, there was no other option to redeem mankind. Hence, God himself came and died on the cross. God came in the form of flesh. The form of human beings uh, and uh, it built upon human beings. Uh, ultimately, he died on the cross for his own people. You see, dear brethren, you see, first of all, can God die? Huh? You should think, no. Can God die? No, because in the Bible, you see, uh, it tells that God is immortal. You see, God is immortal means what? He who has no beginning and no end. You see, there is no end of his life. That is the meaning of uh, immortal. Forget about God dying for mankind. You see, we can't see God at all, first of all. You see, then next comes what? Dying on the cross. You see, when we can't see God himself, how can he can come and die on the cross? So let us read a few few verses. First Timothy 6.16, brother. First Timothy 6.16. Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, no man has seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Ah, you see, 
who only has immortality the bible clearly says that god is immortal see god is not mortal he cannot die at all you see that's the meaning of immortality life within himself where there is no death at all so god is one is the only one who's immortal and where does it dwell what does the bible say it tells uh, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto you see no man can approach god uh, you see who no man has seen dear brother no man has seen god at all it seems uh, you see dear brother uh, if uh, we cannot see god at all then how can god come and die for us okay how many people have seen god let us read for first john 412 first john 412 uh, imani brother good evening welcome uh, if you can uh, read the scriptures so sir it's very kind first john 412 good evening brother i will read from the screen for oh, uh, first john 412 correct No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. See, Bible clearly says that no man has seen God at any time. Forget about some time, at least one time. No, Bible clearly says that God, uh, you see, is invisible. Uh, no man has ever seen God. Uh, you see, even Jesus, uh, you see, uh, tells the same thing. John. One eighteen, John first chapter eighteenth verse. John first chapter eighteenth verse, brother. John first eighteen. No one has ever seen God, but the only one, uh, but one and only Son, who is Himself God, and in and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made Him known. Uh huh. You see, no man has seen God at any time. It seems very clearly. Bible says that no man has seen, but only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared uh, Him to. You see, as it seems. Ah, uh, read one more verse. You see, ah, uh, First Timothy one seventeen, brother. Pasti mati one seventeen. Okay, Ashish, uh, you can read. Pasti mati one seventeen. Ashish, brother, can you read? Okay. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. You see the only wise God. You see King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible. You see, dear brethren. You see, so God is invisible. When God is invisible, how can you see him? If we can't see him, how can he come and die on the cross? You see, it is not me telling that one. The Bible itself clearly tells that one. Why? Even Jesus mentioned the same thing. Read John five thirty seven, John five thirty seven, brother. John five thirty seven, mm -hmm. and the and the Father Himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. You have neither heard His voice at any time, nor seen His face. Very good. So Jesus clearly says. That the Father you have never seen, you have never heard His voice at any time it seems. So let it be any time. Nobody has seen God. Neither have they heard their voice. It seems. Huh? Read one more verse. Colossians one fifteen. Colossians one fifteen, brother. Who is the image of the invisible God, the first one of every creature? Very good. See, 
who is the image of uh, invisible god so god is invisible you see so god cannot be seen at all he is invisible uh, okay and then who died on the cross bible clearly says that god never came and died on the cross bible clearly says that god so loved the world that whom did he give he gave his only begotten son jesus to die on the cross see read john 316 john 316 brother ha ima can you read brother ima For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, God so loved the world that He gave what? His only begotten Son. The Bible doesn't say that God so loved the world that He Himself came and died on the cross. If that was the case, He would have clearly mentioned it. No. So why is the secret, da? Dear brethren, no man can see God, and. stay alive that is the way the bible says god is living in unapproachable light you see we can't even see god and uh, nobody can see god and stay alive exodus 3329 brother exodus 3320 and he said do cannot see my face for there shall no man see me and live very good so god clearly says no man can see my face because there is no man who can see me and live so bible clearly says no man can see god at any time and jesus said that uh, you have never seen god at any time because no man can see and stay alive okay if this is the case if god is invisible immortal then There are so many people who actually spoke to God. It's recorded in the Bible. You see, how is this possible? Oh, uh, to whom did they actually speak? Uh, what actually happened there? You see, what we should do? We should study it from the Bible. For the Bible, Bible is its own dictionary. If you have any questions from the Bible, we need to take out all the answers from the Bible itself. Okay. Now, to whom did Abraham speak? Or uh, you see, eh? what was there actually? What happened? Let us read. You see, eh? in the uh, book of Genesis, twenty-two, verse sixteen. Read with us, huh? Genesis twenty-two. And said by, mm. and said by myself. Have I sown? Said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast done with, has not withhold my son, withhold thy son, thine only son. You see, here God clearly has spoken. No, you see, He says, and He said, by myself I have sown. So God Himself is telling, I am swearing upon myself, Abraham, because you are not withheld thy son. You see. i will bless you abundantly so here clearly is given no that god has spoken why did jesus say that no man has heard his voice at any time no man has seen god at any time why did jesus mention that one you see if this was uh, you see really that god spoke to abraham then uh, why should have jesus mentioned like that one in new testament no man has seen or heard his voice uh, you see then uh, what does the bible say We have seen the ten methods of studying the Bible and how to study the Bible. So, before coming to a conclusion, we should read one verse before the answer is given there only. Genesis twenty-two fifteen, brother. Hmm. And said, "By myself have I sown," said the Lord, "for because thou hast done this thing." Ah, uh, fifteen, brother. Verse fifteen, brother. Okay, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham, and out of heaven, the second time. Ah, you see, so who was the one who spoke to Abraham here? Did God come directly? Hey, everybody, can just uh, think that God came directly and spoke to Abraham. But if you read one verse before, there it clearly says the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. 
That means before this one also, who is the one who spoken to Abraham? It is the same angel who was actually spoken to Abraham, dear brethren. You know, before this one was when, you see, when the three men came to Abraham's house, Abraham started a fatting a calf and prepared them a nice food and gave them. You see, huh? that was the first time. You see, there, let us see what happened. Genesis 18, 1 and 2, brother. Huh? The Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamro, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. You see? So three men came to his house. So Abraham ran to meet them, it seems. So who was, uh, you see, these three men? You see? Jesus gives the answer in John 8, 56. But before this one, just observe this incident. It says, you see, three strangers came to the house of Abraham. And Abraham ran to meet them, it seems. Imagine, yeah, will you do the same thing if you, somebody, a stranger comes to your house, uh, they stay there for two, three days. Will you do the same thing? That you go running and welcome them? No. Any stranger comes, we'll open the window before opening the door and inquire about them. But here, you see, as soon as this three persons came, Abraham, you see, ran with himself. What is the meaning of this one, dear brethren? You see, that means Abraham should have known this person, these three angels before itself. That means these are the three angels who already came to Abraham and spoken to him several times. That is the reason if the same angel appeared, Abraham was so filled with joy that he ran to meet them, welcomed them to the house and slaughtered a fat calf and gave them food. Okay. See, Jesus hence, you see, clearly says that huh? That uh, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he was, he saw and he was glad. So actually here, you see, whom did Abraham see? We will see. Okay. Uh, let us read. Whom did Moses uh, speak to in the burning bush? You see, God spoke to uh, Moses in the burning bush. No? God calls no? Moses, Moses. Moses, Moses. What did Moses reply? Dear Lord, I am here. You see, please remove off the sandal. The place which you are standing is a holy ground. You see. So who spoke in that uh, fiery bush? Let us read Exodus 3, 5, uh, 3, 4. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, please read Exodus 3, 4, brother. Exodus 3, 4. When the Lord saw, the, uh, saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And the Moses replied, Here I am. Ah, so God called from the bush, saying, Moses, Moses. Oh, so God has spoken. Now, why did Jesus say, No man has heard his voice, nor uh, you see, seen his face? If Moses has spoken first face, why is mentioned like that one? Let us read verse 2, brother. Answer is given there only. Exodus. Third chapter verse 2, brother. Huh. Third chapter verse 2. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, he did not burn up. You see? So who was the one who spoke to Moses? Did God come directly? Huh? What is it given? The angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of fire. You see? Huh? And he was the one who spoke, dear brethren. You see, so angel was the one who spoke to Moses, who spoke to Abraham. You see, even you see, who was the one who parted the Red Sea and delivered the people of Israel? Let us read Exodus fourteen nineteen, brother. Exodus fourteen nineteen, brother. Huh? Exodus 
Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front, in front and stood behind them. You see, who went? Uh, actually, the angel of the Lord. Uh, uh, you see, he, God sent the angel of the Lord to guide, uh, protect the people of Israel. Uh, you see, therefore, what does God say about this angel? Exodus 23rd chapter, verses 20 to 22. Hmm. To verse 20 to 22. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Hmm, you see, what did God say? Behold, I send the angel before thee to keep thee. You see, be careful with him. Obey his voice. Don't provoke him. He will never pardon your sin. Why? Because my name is in him. You see, because he is my representative. Hence, my name is in him. Then continue with the next. Huh? But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and all adversary unto thine adversaries. Uh -huh. But if sure, thou shall obey his voice and all the things that I speak, uh -huh. underline, you see, his voice, but who will be actually speaking? I am speaking through him. Dear brethren, all the scriptures in the Bible, if you read and take, it is mentioned like this only. Everybody misunderstands and think that God spoke directly to mankind. Everybody are hearing his voice. No, dear brethren. God is in an unapproachable light whom no man can see, nor can see. You see, nobody is there who has heard his voice and stayed alive. Dear brethren, you see, many people, you see, forget this one and misunderstand thinking that God himself came and died on the cross. You see? Huh? How can God come and die on the cross? You see, therefore, you know, actually Jesus died on a Friday and was resurrected on Sunday. So, Friday is not there, Saturday is not there, Sunday only he was resurrected. So, even today in England, you know, there are more robbery that is happening on Friday, Good Friday. So, why? You know? Because Good Friday means God died. So, Saturday means uh, he was not there. So, Sunday only was resurrected. So, two days uh, there was no God. Uh, hence, uh, there are a lot of robbery, it seems. Uh. Dear brethren, you see, eh? if uh, God himself is dead, then who rose him up? What about this condition of this world? You see? If people only think like this, if God is dead, then we can do all sorts of evil. What will say Tanto if God is dead? He will keep it. You see, he will make sure that he never comes back. Dear brethren, that is not what the Bible says. The Bible says that Jesus was dead and buried. And God was the one who raised him after how many days? After three days on the third day. Read Acts 10. Verse 40. Acts 10, chapter verse 40. Him God raised up the third day and saved him openly. You see, him God raised up. Not that Jesus himself came. You see, God raised Jesus. Hence, he was resurrected back up. Okay. But, uh, you know, so many people uh, think of, no brother, there is one scripture where Jesus said that uh, I am the father of one. So that is very clear. Jesus is the father. Father is Jesus. So completely finished. Let us read uh, that one in John 10 chapter verse 30. John 10 30 brother. Huh? John 10, 30. Mm. I and my father are one. Mm. I and my father are one. 
So what is the meaning of I am a father of one? Everybody thinks that Jesus said that I am the father and the father uh, is me. So both are uh, one and the same. Uh, Jesus, uh, did he mention like that? No, no, no. Jesus said, I am my father or one. He never said that I am the father. Nor did he say that I am my father at one and the same. No, 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 no. Jesus never said that one. Jesus clearly said that I and the father are one. One means not physical oneness, dear brethren. But oneness in understanding, you see. You know, where do we find the answer for this one? Jesus mentioned this one in the same book, Gospel of John, 17, chapter 11, verse. Read. John 17, 11. John 17, 11. Hmm. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. You see, that they may be one as we are. Huh? What is Jesus prayer? Jesus prayed, Lord, let them all be one. How? As uh, we both are one. No? Similarly, let them also be one. Is himself. What is the meaning of that one? Huh? Is it literally oneness? Literally one and the same? No. Are we and the Father one and the same? Are we and Jesus one and the same? No. Read. Read with verse 21. Read with Same chapter verse 21 also with that. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Uh -huh. See, Jesus clearly mentioned it. How is this oneness? Not physical oneness. Uh. Jesus said, How Father you are in me and I am in you. Same way, let all this be one in us, it seems. Uh. What does this mean? This physical oneness. Uh. Huh? God came physically in Jesus. Jesus came physically in uh, God, it seems. Uh. And that means that uh, we are physically in God. God is physically in us. No, dear Buddhran. You see, this is the oneness of understanding, oneness of mind, oneness of purpose, oneness of intention. That is what Jesus is speaking. You may remember, in one bus ticket, how much can, how many people can travel? Only one people can travel, not multiple people. You see, so, what is the meaning of one in the Bible? The Bible says in Matthew 19, 5, that after marriage, husband and wife are one. You see? Now what does it mean by one? Uh, does it mean that after marriage, husband and wife become one and the same? Huh? They become one and the same? No. They both are two different identities. Husband and wife, even though they are separate, they are one in aim, purpose, ambitions, goal. This is the oneness of the same thing that Jesus was also speaking. You see, the Bible says after marriage both are one. You see? Huh? Correct, no? Uh, let us read Matthew 19, 5. Matthew 19, 5. Brother. Matthew 19, 5. And say, for this God shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they twin shall be one flesh. See, one flesh. They should be one, it seems. Right? Little one. Yes, huh? Even though they are one, who is the head of the family? Who is the head of the family, brother? Husband or wife? Huh? Tell me. Husband. Husband. You see, though both are one, who is the head? Husband. Uh, read. Ephesians 5.23, brother. Since 5.23 For the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the source and he is the savior of the body. See? Though husband and wife are one, what does the Bible say? That uh, husband is the head of uh, the wife. We read now John 17.21 that uh, uh, church and Jesus should be one. 
But what does the Bible say? Uh, though we are one, Jesus is the head of the church, it seems. Uh, okay, now who is the head of Jesus? Uh? Read 1 Corinthians 11.3. 1 Corinthians 11.3. 1 Corinthians 11.3. But I would have you know that the head of the every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of the Christ is God. Uh -huh. Head of Christ is who? God it seems. Uh, dear brethren, though there are one uh, oneness in understanding, uh, who is head it seems. Uh, it is God who is head of Jesus, dear brethren. Uh, definitely this is not speaking about the physical oneness at all. See, we are at the subject about uh, church. See, we are all the body members of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the head. So similarly, it is with him and the Heavenly Father. You see, huh? Jesus has a head uh, that is Heavenly Father. Dear brethren, we read uh, John 10.30, no? where it says that uh, I and the Father are one. You see, but just read one verse before. What did Jesus say? John 10.29, brother. Huh? Ten twenty nine. My father, which gave him, gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Ah, see, Jesus, what did he say? Jesus clearly said that, uh, huh? my father is greater than all. Though we are one, who is greater? It seems, uh, father is greater. It seems, dear brethren. Therefore, you see, this clearly mentions and clearly tells us that, uh, you see. Jesus and the Father has got not physical oneness at all. They are neither physical one, neither are they one and the same. You see, but uh, you see, uh, they are oneness uh, in uh, plan, purpose, same ambitions. Whatever they do, you see. Therefore, Jesus said, who is greater? Jesus, God is greater than me. You see. And Jesus said, you see, the Father is greater than everything, it seems. John 14, 28, brother. Huh? John 14, 28. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. See, I go to my Father because Father is greater than me. You see, and uh, Jesus, did he come of himself? No. He did not come by himself, dear brethren. The Father sent him. You see, he did not come by himself. You see, because the Father told him, hence he came and died on the cross. Therefore, we read John 3.16, God so of the world. Read John 8.48, brother. Huh? John 8.48, brother. Huh? Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and has a devil. John 8 42, brother. 42. Ah. You can read from John 8 42. You're comfortable. It's John 8 42. Hmm. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, he would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. You see, I came from God. You see, I did not come by myself. He sent me. God only sent Jesus Christ. You see, and did Jesus have his own life? No. God gave him that life. John 6, 57, brother. John 6, 57. Hmm. As the living father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. See? I live by the Father. He is not immortal. His life is supported by the Father. You see? Huh? Now, who is the greater? The one who has come or one who is sent? Imagine if you are working in a company. You see? If you are a representative of a company, who is greater? Huh? Is the uh, one person who is working there greater uh, is the boss. Uh, you see, the owner of the company. Of course, the boss is greater. You see, Jesus tells that one. See, John 13, 16. John 13, 16. Huh? 
John 13, 16. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, <clears throat> neither he that is sent greater than his, he that sent him. Mm, you see, the servant is not greater than the master, neither he that is uh, sent greater than he that uh, sent him. Dear brethren, one who came is not greater, but who actually sent him? No, God. He is greater. You see, Jesus also clearly says, I can do nothing of myself. Whatever my father does, the same thing I do it. John 5.30 brother. Huh? John 5.30 I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the father which hath sent me. See? I don't seek my own. Whatever the father does, the same thing I do it. Therefore, you see, Jesus was actually created even before the whole world was created. You see? And hence, Jesus mentioned that I before Abraham was, I am. So, Jesus, even before he was born in the mother Mary womb, he actually existed. You see? He actually existed as the first born of God. First creation of God. You see, when God decided to do or create anything, the first thing he decided and created was Jesus. You see, let us read a few verses. Uh, uh, Colossians, first chapter 15th verse. Brother. Let us read from the bottom. Colossians 1, 15 brother. Colossians 1.15 Who is the image of the invisible God? The first one of every creature. You see? Who is the huh? image of invisible God? Uh -huh. See? God is invisible, it seems. And who is this, the image? You see? That is Jesus Christ. You see? We can't see God, but who is this, the image? Who is this, Zarax? You see? And that is Jesus. And he is called the firstborn. The first creation is him, sir. I read, brother. Revelation 3.14, brother. Huh? Revelation 3.14. And unto the angel of the church of the Lord is saints write, These things said, the, Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Ah, the beginning of the creation of God. You see, when God decided to create anything, the first thing God decided and created was He created Jesus Christ. Hence, He is called as the firstborn of every creature. You see, imagine the glory uh, which Jesus will be having. This is completely different than all the other creations of God. Now, how was His glory? Let us read John 17, 5. Brother. John 17, 5. Brother. John 17, 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou with thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Aha! Uh -huh. With the glory which I had before the world was. You see, so Jesus had the glory with the, when he was with the Father. That glory, you see, God had not given to anybody. That was special, reserved for God's firstborn. Therefore, what did he say to? People of Israel, before Abraham was I am. He existed even before the days of Abraham. Therefore, God, you see, next created all the other things through whom? Through Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ was himself created directly by the Father. So understand, you see, but the rest of things, God created through Jesus. Let us read Colossians 1. 16 and 17. Well, 1, 16 and 17. For by him were all things created, that all in all are in heaven, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, mm. whether they be thrones yeah. or dominions mm. or the principal principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Mm. And he is before all things, ah. and by him all things consist. Ah, you see, all things were created. You see, for oh, whom? Old fiddle. Ah, 
him you see all things were created through him let it be anything visible or invisible but uh, jesus himself jesus himself was created by god when after after him all the things which god ever has created he is created through jesus and for jesus therefore see john 13 john first chapter third verse brother is john 13 all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made that was made all things were made by him without him nothing was made except jesus was created directly by the father all the things were made by whom god created through jesus read john 110 also brother same chapter verse 10 brother john 110 he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not oh mm, the world was made by him you see can read over uh, revelation 18 also brother revelation 18 i am alpha and omega the beginning and the ending saith the lord which is and which was and which is to come the almighty you see alpha and the omega beginning and end what is the meaning of the beginning and end alpha and omega alpha and omega are the first and last greek letters like a to z we say no so jesus is the a to z you see in god's plan it seems jesus is the alpha and omega it seems you see he is the beginning and end it seems in what in god's creation he is the first he is the last direct creation of god jesus is the first direct creation of god jesus is the last direct creation of god for the rest of all other creations god has created through jesus okay so therefore jesus is called the alpha and omega imagine dear brother so jesus has got a different glory it is not like other all the other creations his standard is totally different like what the son of god has that glory jesus is having john 114 brother john 114 and the world was made flesh and dwelt among us and we behold his glory and the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth oh, we behold jesus how as if uh, like one who is the son of god not god himself full of grace and truth how god's son will be it is the same way you see they saw jesus it seems because jesus had all the glory within him you see therefore uh, let us read one more verse uh, what what, uh, what is like seeing jesus what does it mean like seeing jesus hebrews 13 brother ha uh. hebrews 13 who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the world by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high mm, who being the brightness of his glory jesus is the brightness of god's glory it seems express image of god it seems to be that you to clearly mention it is actually xerox copy of god you see that was the glory of jesus you see in that way jesus actually personified completely you see huh? all the things all the character all the features uh, which god had was in jesus you know and sir uh, philip once requested him huh? lord master you are telling so many times about your father 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 please at least one time please show me your father what did jesus say jesus said if you have seen me then you have seen the father what does it mean does it mean that i am the father father in me you see he could have clearly told i am the father what why do you want to see father i am the father you see but did jesus never mention that one he is mentioned he told If you see me, it is like seeing the Father. Read, brother. John fourteen nine, brother. 
John 49, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? He had, he that had seen me had seen the Father, and how say, sayest thou, then so was the Father. Oh, he that has seen me has seen the Father, not physical uh, seeing, the then all the character uh, you see of God was in Jesus because he was the express image of God. Uh, you see, so Jesus also clearly mentioned, uh, uh, you see, that uh, he that seeth me has seen the one who has sent me. Why? Because Jesus never did anything of his own. Whatever the father did, the same thing he did. Uh, let us read John 5, 19 and John 12, 45 also, brother. John 5, 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things so over he doth, these also doth the Son likewise. Mm, whatever the Father does, the same thing the Son does. Therefore, if Jesus, Jesus, see Jesus, it's like seeing God. Then continue with the next, John 12, 45. Brother, huh? John 12, 45. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Sent me. Does it mean literally seeing? Huh? No, dear brother. It is not literally God. But we can't see God because he is in a living in unapproachable light whom no man can see nor can see. Hence, if see Jesus, you know, seeing God because all the character features of God was clearly seen in our master. Lord Jesus Christ. So, the Bible says that, uh, you see, a God uh, likeness was in uh, Jesus. Similarly, the Bible says, you see, uh, that uh, our uh, body, in our body, in our life, you see, uh, who should be manifested? Uh, Jesus should be manifested, it seems. Uh, let us read uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 11, brother. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.11 For we who sleep are always delivered unto the death of death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. See, the life also of Jesus be manifest in our mortal flesh. Here, well, not literally, Jesus is manifested in our flesh. It is by his character, dear brother. And, uh, you see, therefore, you know, Jesus has got one name, Emmanuel. Emmanuel is what? Uh, God with us. How oh, God is with us. It is not that God is literally physically with us because no man can see God. He is in unapproachable light. But God, you see, through Jesus, through his son, he lived among us. Therefore, Jesus is called as Emmanuel. Uh -huh. You see, therefore, seeing means not literal seeing. It is understanding. Jesus said, no, he that has ears, let him hear. He that has eyes, let them see. So, see means what? You see, see means understanding. Okay? So, dear brethren, so we stop here this week. So, next week will be a very important uh, part of it because next week we are going to see then how was Jesus when he was with the Father? So, what all things uh, he had and what other things that he did, you see, and a uh, lot of other scriptures from the Bible we'll see and uh, we'll understand more. Okay, so uh, I'm sure you'll be having a lot of questions, so no need to worry. Uh, please stay calm because next week after the class, we will clearly discuss about various points of the Bible from various angles. Any doubts, any questions you can ask, we'll discuss. Okay. So, 